Okay, part two, still soldering my CNC board. Sometimes in the camera these little leads look like they're bent into the other pad, but it's really just the camera angle. It's pretty vertical relative to the board. So here we go. The lead's really short, so the next leads you cut aren't longer than the previous ones. Otherwise the board tends to grow hair longer as you go, hair being the copper wires. And let's see, I guess I will do populate these little screw terminal blocks next. I also use tape for those. And one mistake I made was I put the part where you insert the wire over here and to unsolder. And the neat thing about these connectors are you can clip them together with this little tab. But I don't do that because once you clip them together and solder them in, it's harder to desolder it if you have to do that. So I go ahead and leave them as singles. And I don't want it here, I want it into these vertical strips right there and there should be enough space for the wire to insert right there. I use my tape to hold it in. I filed my soldering iron and put some more solder on it and let it sit for a while and it's working much better today. It started pooling up yesterday because I don't, I didn't clean my tip every time. Sometimes I do that but I'm having pretty good luck without flux and without cleaning my tip and things go a little faster. And you do want to make sure to press these screw terminals in all the way to the board, otherwise they will try to flex left and right and try to crack your solder joint. Push them all the way in. I really love this strip board because I don't need to bridge, make bridges from one single pad to another to make connections from wires, jumper wires, to other components. Makes things go a lot faster and I don't have to heat the solder as long. Keeps the components cooler. I've been using blue and yellow wire to connect to my stepper motor outputs to my screw terminals. Blue and yellow. And on this chip the motor output is on the very edge. I might not need tape for this wire.
and the yellow wire goes from the other stepper output or motor output of the H bridge to this side of the chip. Again, I'm using sockets, although they don't recommend sockets for this chip. I'm still using it in case I need to desolder it and switch out another one. Um, and I can always go back and buy a solder wick or something and wick that uh, socket out and put a real chip in permanently if I want to. And again, you put the solder to the tip to get yourself a little pool of solder on the tip. Put the tip to the lead and then your solder to the pad and the lead. Tip on, solder on. Next, I'm going to connect the positive and negative, and I think I'll be done. I've been putting the negative lead on the outside of the board in case the insulation comes apart or something, it touches another component. It'll be grounded rather than have positive along there. I don't know if that makes a difference, but that's what I've been doing. And solder to the tip, tip to the lead and the pad, solder to the pad and the lead. Only one more to go. Oops, I left a little gap between the blue connector and the board, so I'm just going to push that in a little farther. I guess my tape wasn't tight enough. There, that's better. So, and this also makes getting the red wire in a little easier because I don't have a lot of space. I'm going to bend this over and tape it and then go for the next connection after this one is soldered. Now this wire is vertical and it looks vertical on the camera too. You want to get a little pool of solder on your tip first because surrounds the lead with solder on the tip side and it also helps conduct the heat into the pad and the lead hopefully this lead is long enough I need it to go into right here short, but 
but I can make it work. pull it from this side so I don't have a lot of copper exposed on the other side. There we go. Don't want to put too much tension on the board because I could crack the solder joints. And I don't really like the wires touching each other even though they're insulated. So I have a screwdriver with a little notch out of it and I'll use this screwdriver to push the black wire down away from the red wire. Okay, and I don't like how there's a little bit of space between these wires the exposed copper, so I'll probably push them in a little more. What I can do is pull this one out and bend it over so it holds while I solder it. That's good for this wire. I'm going to solder that one first and then try to pull the other one tighter. Notice I bent the lead in the direction of the pad that it's going to touch anyway so I don't accidentally bridge a pad that I to another pad that I don't want it to connect to. I made that mistake before. Okay. Now I want to push this one in. A little bit farther in case some little flake of solder comes off or a little piece of wire or some dust I don't know I don't want it to touch the copper and possibly conduct to another lead on the board so I guess I'll bend this yellow wire away so that the red wire can have more space Push away from this socket and now I will push with my finger and try not to burn it as I heat the solder. There it went through much tighter but I'm still gonna reheat this connection and make sure the solder is tight to the pad not just a cold solder joint or a loose solder joint. Hopefully it didn't flex back out when I did that. It did a little bit. I'll go ahead and fix it again. Okay, that was nice and hot on my finger. This time I'll bend the pat, bend the lead a little bit. Even though it's got solder on it, it's still bendable. There wasn't too much solder on it. When there's too much solder, you can't bend them at all. And if you did bend them, they would probably crack your board or solder joint. There. I make sure it flows into the pad. Okay. I think that's good. Now, is there anything I forgot? Oh yeah. I didn't do any of the control wires yet. The control wires go from this side, four of them, all the way to these IDC pins. I'm going to cut a ribbon connector and leave six pins worth. And I cut that on a scroll saw so it's only this wide, an IDC ribbon cable from the old IDE hard drives. And then this 
other this side will connect here and the other side will go to my microprocessor to send the signals to control the stepper motor. For these connections I've been using stripped ethernet cable. It's got lots of different colors and it lets me keep track of the signals and the wires where they are. Um, and I'm going to solder them. I'm going to skip a hole between the pins and the wires that way um, I don't heat these pins on accident just because I have the space. Make sure to push them all the way in. Tape them really tight. My wires are starting to get a little high on this side of the board. Usually I do the control wires before the power wires, but I forgot this time. And since I wire all the boards the same, I want to make sure to get the solid orange wire to the right of the white and orange wire just so it helps prevent mistakes in wiring if I can look at the boards and know where my wires are and where they should be. Now when you solder you want to make sure the insulation doesn't poke through to this side see a little bit of it poking out there and well maybe not uh, otherwise yeah there is a little bit otherwise it will spoil your solder joint possibly give you a bad solder joint so I just poked it in a little with my finger there I'm gonna go for the easy one first so it holds the other one in place. There. The best way to look for long leads is to hold it sideways. There's a long one right there. Now on this other one, I skip a wire on the left and then put the white, orange, and then the orange. On these wires, I don't connect them in a row, I connect them diagonally. It makes looking at the wires to know what holes they go in a lot easier when they're in a row and they're almost the same color it's sometimes hard to tell If you hold the heat on these wires too long, the insulation melts on the other side. And I need to 
spin this wire away from the socket because my chip is going to fit in this socket. So two more wires and I'll be done. Okay, it is starting to look a little crowded on this board, mainly because my wires are pretty long and I haven't been keeping them as short as possible to the board. But these ethernet wires are pretty easy to bend and I can bend them down into the board so they won't stick out as far. see a little bit of blue insulation so I'm poking them down a little and bend them straight up and down so they don't bridge to another solder pad still see a little blue That's better. It's hard to get my tip in close when you're going in the middle of two solder joints. So now I'm just touching the top of the copper and melting it down to the pad with my solder, not the tip of the iron. No exposed copper and no insulation poking through on this side. There they are. <laughs> Need to bend these straight. I got them confused with the ones I previously did because I didn't clip them off yet. Okay, now I guess I'm done. All I need to do is check with my multimeter and make sure that none of the solder joints are bridged from one pad to another where they're not supposed to be. And I also test for conductance along a strip of solder pad to make sure that everything is connected where it should be. And I'll look over this board through this phone it makes a pretty good magnifying glass make sure I don't have any bridges where I shouldn't last time I found one this one looks pretty good although I see a cold or not a cold I see a gap on this hole right here I'm gonna fix that don't see any bridges where I shouldn't have a bridge. And I don't see any holes except for this one. And I fixed that one. And this is a big soldering tip, but I'm using 0.8 millimeter solder, which really makes the difference. So even with a big soldering tip, this is just the one that came with the soldering iron at Radio Shack. 
30 plus years ago. <laughs> Still, I can solder pretty precisely. Okay. This one might be a cold solder joint. I'm going to fix that one too. Just reflow the solder. Cold solder joint I think means that the solder wasn't hot enough when it melted to the lead so it didn't flow into the copper pad. Hence the name cold maybe. Um, there that one I saw it soak into the copper. Mm, there's still a little gap there. Maybe I need more solder on the tip side of my iron, of the joint, I mean, instead of the... Let's see if this helps. That looks better. A little bit too much solder, but I think that's it.